Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Coogan Cassius from LTV. We're in Sheffield, we're back in Sheffield. Smith versus Zapeda. A very good undercard, especially for Matram this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good undercard. It's a great, it's not a good undercard, it's a great undercard. You want 50 50 matchups, don't you? You've don't got, you, boy? You've got four on here. We've got five on here. What's the fifth one? We've got five TV fights on Saturday. That's after before the bell. Five TV fights. Nico Leviars against Pietro Miga. Eliminate, final eliminator for the English title. 50 50 fight. Campbell Hatton. Against Jimmy Joe Flint, 50 50 fight. Ishmael Davis <laughs> against Troy Williamson, 50 50 fight. Sandy Ryan against Terry Harper, 50 50 fight. Dalton Smith against Jose Zapeda, in my 50 50 fight. Some people might favour Dalton, you don't know enough about Jose Zapeda. This is a banger. Five. 50-50 fights on Saturday, live on DAZN around the world. Get up there, boy! All part of your DAZN's subscription. Yes. Right, let's do the rumour mill first of all. Loads of rumours in the last week or so. Some of them are wild, some of them probably true. Let's get straight into it with Eddie Hearn. Give us the lowdown. Rumours are... Rumour number one. Rumour number one. There is a delay to your announcement of the 5v5 because you could be potentially pushing it back a little bit that's rumour number one pushing it back a little bit as always rumour number one total bollocks June the first yes who told you that by the way I've not even heard that rumour yeah I've heard that wait there what's going on did you make that one up it's just going over wait there wait there could you keep moving could you look if there I, I, I move in the interviews because when you're a little bit way, you're a little bit way. Then you've got to move about, haven't you, boy? Right. Because I heard that one of the fighters on the main event needed a little bit more time. That's what I heard. On the main event? Oh, what? Bivol better be? I haven't heard that. Maybe you know something I don't. Definitely don't know more than you. You know everything. No. Okay. I mean, I represent Dimitri Bivol. He's ready. Okay. We've not heard anything that Arta better be of isn't ready, no. Okay. Great. That's squashed. That's squash. Well, These are genuine rumours. You've, you've put the wind up in here. Might have to check that one out. Second rumour. Here we go. Part one of the from one so far. Go on. Part of the 5v5 will involve a fight between Deontay Wilder and Jilei Zhang because you're signing Deontay Wilder. No. Uh, where do you get this stuff from? Is it bollocks or not? There are a lot of conversations. But firstly, no fight has been made. Right? All we know, which you don't know, is the weight classes, right? So, the answer to your question is no. Um, right now, no or no, no? I mean, obviously when the weight classes are released, you will see that, you know, there is, I don't wanna to go too much into it because I've got a big mouth, um, but there could be a little twist and turn okay. in one of the weight classes, but, a fight that you, someone else came on to me about that fight. I think it's a brilliant fight, but I don't represent Zile Zhang at the moment. I don't represent, uh, or I can't represent Zile Zhang, he's a George. I don't represent Deontay Wilder. Um, if I had to go and sign a fighter in a division, I might be able to do that, but you'll learn more soon. So you're going well so far. No, that one's a little umming and ahhing. It's not, that one is a, like anything could happen, okay. but no. This ain't really a rumour because this was reported, but oh, well, it must be true. Dubois Hergovic yeah. will be on that. Same thing. Like, that fight is not made, no. But if, as you'll find out soon, the heavyweight division is in the 5v5, Hergovic is someone that we work with. Dubois is someone at Frank Warren. So a lot of this stuff you're hearing at the moment is, oh, if it's this weight class, if it's that weight class. You're talking about two heavyweight fights there. You don't even know if heavyweight division's been picked twice for the 5v5. Do you know what I mean? So wait till you hear the weight classes and then the speculation can really begin. This ain't really a rumour. This is even more advanced this, okay. than this. Ajit Kabayel left a comment on one of his social posts saying first of the sixth. 
with a little fire emoji. Is he on the card? Uh, again, I don't represent Ajit Kabir. Queensbury don't represent Ajit Kabir. So anything can happen. But as of right now, no. I reckon. So you're going really well. Out of all them, one of them is going to happen. Oh, oh, well done. One out of five rumours. Four. Four. How are you anyway? I'm absolutely unbelievable. Okay, so what is the reason that we haven't had any kind of announcement regarding the 5v5? Um, probably because we want to get, or His Excellency, all of us want to get the promotion in order. There is a press conference set for the middle of April. I heard that as well, by the okay, way. Well, that is true. So there is no tearing rush to get out of the weight classes. Um, I've been away for a couple of days. I will speak to George this week. There is some filming taking place early next week. I've heard where as well. Have you? Yeah. Where? I won't say it, but I'll mouth it to you. Cool. Right? One place is... So, ready? Yeah. And one is... Yeah, that's right. That's actually right. <laughs> yeah, so get ready for another stunning promo. So if I was right about that, what else am I right about? Do you know what I'm you're, saying, Geezer? You're well in the know you, aren't you, boy? What did you make of Ngannou's comments about factors to why? We saw you, you left a comment, actually, on one of the posts from Pro Boxing Fans, I think. What did you make about his reasonings to why everyone's entitled to their reasons and to why they believe they weren't at their best or whatever? What, what did you think? I thought it was really disappointing, to be honest with you. Like, I really like Francis Ngannou, and I thought in the build-up, very respectful, even in defeat, very respect, uh, respectful. But what he basically said was, he he was told to come to the venue an hour before Joshua, and these are the games that people played. Well, who's playing the games? We certainly didn't tell him what time to go to the venue. You know, everybody had their time to go to the venue, of which we had as well. But you 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 make your own decisions about what time you go to the venue, and that's all down to your preparation before a fight. Some people like to get there three hours before the fight. Some people like to get there an hour and a half before the fight. It's completely up to you. So Joshua came at the time he likes to come at. He, I think Joshua was probably told to come earlier, as all fighters are. Probably a little bit of lack of experience, but you know, to point the fingers that people were playing games. And he said, and it got him tired. Well, what was he doing? A circuit or something in the changing room. I mean, he was only sitting down on the sofa. I mean, with all due respect, I don't think it mattered if he, if he was, had 1% of energy or 99% of energy. He was still getting iced. And he got iced. And he should just say, I got iced by the best heavyweight in the world. Congratulations. And, you know, he's going to go on. Heard his comments, he might fight again. He might go to UFC. He's got a great career ahead of him. He's a, you know, he's a fantastic uh, fighter. By the way, my next comment... I do think he's absolute bollocks, right? But I do, and I know you would have seen it because you're on social media, you see things, right? Have you seen this thing, like where the video of Joshua's knockout is slowed down and yeah, people I mean, are saying it was staged and all this? I mean, I do, I want to go on record as saying this is absolutely I mean, I mean, mental. It was one of the most brutal things I've ever seen. You could hear the punch land at the back of the arena. I mean, the internet is just wild. And there are even people that are like slowing down the image and like stopping it to make sure that he actually missed him. I mean, did you see France? Francis Ngannou, he, like, he's at, by his own admissions, he says, I remember the first punch, the first knockdown. After that, I don't remember anything else. I mean, he was completely and utterly out, cold, on the floor. I mean, to the point... Worryingly. What, very worryingly. So, yeah, no... It definitely wasn't staged. Fuck's sake, some right tips out there. I had to have this conversation with a couple of people I know who have bought into this a little bit, and I had to explain them. So you're telling me that this has been like a... Okay, so, I mean, just like, let's talk about it. So if it was staged, what do you... So Joshua throws the right hand, but just, miss, what, just misses or... or 
Ngannou just takes it clean on the chin but pretends to be knocked out? Is that wh- Which one is it? And also they've spent weeks manoeuvring this as well without no one knowing. WWE style. What's going to happen is, mate, I've trained for 12 weeks and I've done like 200 rounds of sparring, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to you. You're going to go down three times, right? And then on the last one, I'm going to run straight up to you and throw the biggest right hand that's ever seen in the heavyweight division. What I'll do is I'll just miss by a millimetre, but you pretend that, that it's hit you. Or if it does hit you, just go down and pretend you're knocked out. What? I mean, the conspiracy theory is actually worldwide, not just about AJ and Garnu, worldwide. Like even the one, I remember actually people said it about Jake Paul's knockout of, what was that guy's name? Anderson Silva? Nate. Diaz? No, the other one. No, not Nate. Tom uh, Woodley. Yes. Like, oh, that was a, a fake. You, you, you see the right hand, yeah? And you see the spray coming off his head. This is not WWE. And, and AJ, I mean, firstly, can you imagine me going up to AJ and going, right, mate, um, we want to we wanna talk about how we're going to stage a knockout between you and Ngana. And like <laughs> he, him with Ben Davison in camp, working on actually just missing... Do you know what I mean? A crazy world we live in, absolutely. So basically, of the five things that you've said so far, one thing might be true. We'll see about that. We'll see as time comes into fruition. Eddie, what were you made of the... I've had the press conference for Canelo and Munguia, um, which obviously you're not promoting, so you weren't at. Um, what did you make of the... <laughs> it's on the zone. It's on the zone. What did you make about the comments about wanting 150 to 200 mil, etc.? Um, I think they were a bit reactive. Do you know what I mean? I, th- I think he doesn't really... He's obviously under a bit of pressure to fight Benavides. Um, and it is a massive fight. Massive fight. And I think he's like just a little bit... I don't know. I know that Saul will fight Benavides. He do, honestly doesn't have a problem with him fighting Ben, but maybe he's just putting his marker down, saying that's my number. And if you all want it so bad, pay me. Would you so, pay that? No. But it's a big fight. I mean, it's a, it's a massive fight. But he holds all the aces, you know. And Benavides is a great fighter as well. But there is going to be a lot of pressure on that fight, a lot of pressure. And it's how you deal with... The questions is how you deal with the pressure. But you see, the thing is with Sal, he really doesn't actually give a shit. Like, he's fought everybody. Everything now for Sal is about business. He still wants to fight, and he, you know, he wants to take these guys on. But he's, he'll be more like, yeah, listen, if you want that fight so bad, pay me. So sometimes it doesn't go down very well with the fans because they want you to fight you know, the, the biggest and best fights. But he will. He won't duck anyone, that's for sure. But I think he knows it's a tough fight and he knows the, the biggest problem for Sal is the rehydration of Benavides. You heard that in the comments about 25 pounds and stuff like that. Like, Benavides will come into the ring probably not a million miles off 200 pounds. Certainly 190. So Sal's going to come in at 175, 180 tops. So he's going to come in nearly a stone heavier, probably. It's a lot of weight. Are you going to the fight night? May 4th? No. Didn't they give you a ticket? Uh, I could go if I want to. I mean, my job was kind of done in the sense that I didn't get the fight, but we made sure that it was on the zone. I just thought he was your mate, so you just go there to support he's him. my friend. He'll always be my friend. I'll always support him. I'll always have his back and I'll always tell people that he will fight anybody and he will. Quick trivia question. You've got four seconds to answer this, otherwise it doesn't count. Alvarez has fought someone involved in this fight week. Who is it? Involved in the fight week? Involved in the fight week. Doesn't mean they're fighting. Matthew Hatton. Good. Good, 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 good. Um, Let's talk about Dalton Smith. Mm. This is a very hard fight. 
Zapeda. I mean, everyone, boxing fans know about Zapeda. Um, this is uh, one of them fights. It's kind of a little bit of a make or break as well. The reality is, we all talk about how good Dalton Smith is, but he's never boxed anywhere near this level. Like before Saturday, his toughest test has been Sam Maxwell. I can't tell you, with all due respect, Sam Maxwell. He's a decent opponent. For, yeah, absolutely. Who, who, how many levels this is above that? And we've seen so many times fighters come unstuck at this level. Like, there is absolutely no doubt Jose Zapida is a world-class fighter. So to go from British, which is where Dalton's been fighting, to this level is a massive jump. We feel like he's ready. We feel like he's good enough. You know, there's been loads of chat about... Adam Azim and all this kind of stuff. This is miles beyond that. So we've got to really be focused for Saturday. And Dalton will be. And Grant will be. But this is a proper, proper fight. And that's what I said earlier about it being a 50-50 fight. You know, I know Dalton's a favourite, but he can really punch Jose Zapita. And he's coming here kind of last chance saloon. We saw what he did to Jose uh, Vargas and people like that. He's a dangerous, dangerous man. And very good. Manny Robles, you know, proper team. It's a great fight. Where are we with the whole <laughs> situation regarding? I know I ask you about it every week because it didn't seem to be a, a resolution from whether um, Azim has been pulled out yet or not. We know there's conversations, I think you said, that Frank had had with Ben Shalom that they're going to do it. But are they waiting for this fight to happen first, do you think, before no making their move? I have no idea. I don't know what they're waiting for. They've already told us Adam Azim is not taking the fight. So why haven't they pulled him out of it? I have no idea. Why doesn't someone ask them? No one asks them. Well, their fight week's next week, so them questions will come. But I'm just asking, why do you think they're having... I'm just asking you your opinion. Because they don't really know what they're doing. And when you don't know what you're doing, you don't do anything. What you should do is you should come out and you should say, Adam Azim's not ready for Dalton Smith yet. We're going to pass on the opportunity. But listen, down the line, that is a big fight. That is a great fight. We'd love to make it happen. There's no... Like... We're not going to turn around and go, ha, ah, you pulled out the fight. It's just, but we will if you keep on messing everybody around like you keep on doing. So, listen, after Jose Zapida, God willing, he beats him, we're well beyond Adam Azim anyway. But we would still do the fight because it's a big fight for the British fight fans. Um, I saw Sky Sports put an image out of Azim and Dalton Smith the other day, though. So yeah, but it was like it's just like propaganda. It's like yes, yeah, down the line, this is a big one. What are you talking about down the line? It's next. It's been ordered by the British Boxing Board of Control and by the EBU. What's down the line got to do with it? It's the next fight, and they'll probably pull out before Saturday because if they don't, when Dalton Smith wins, touch wood. It will become really embarrassing because we'll just we'll just call it like I mean you know, and then they'll pull out and it'll be even worse. But whatever, it's not really our business. Each to their own. Um, I'm thinking Harper and Ryan is a bang on 50-50. I can't really sway either way. Uh, fair play to both fighters for taking this fight. Exactly what you want, and you know you got to feel for Sandy because she got robbed against McCaskill. In, in America and she deserves a big fight and I think this is the perfect fight for the winner obviously if you lose you're involved in a great fight everyone's getting paid very well but the winner's going to really be in a great position to push on you know for Terry Harper it's a chance to become a three time three weight world champion quite amazing and she's always beaten champions to do it by the way for Sandy you know, it's about cementing her position as a real star in the sport. And like I said, she was you know, horribly unlucky not to get the decision in Orlando. But a big fight for both, you know. Derby against Sheffield, both sold a lot of tickets. People see it as a 50-50 and, you know, big respect to both for taking it. Let's stick with the, the women. Um, any updates regarding Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron, mm. that situation, first of all? Yeah, um... I mean, Katie Taylor, due to fight, probably now in June, early June. Is that because Taylor Cattrall's moved to the 25th? Yeah, we, we hadn't had a fight confirmed for Katie Taylor for that date. So that Taylor Cattrall fight lands on that date. We're working on a couple of very big fights for Katie Taylor. Um, there is a chance she may fight in America next. And yes, we are working away aggressively 
and for Chantel Cameron, you know, looking at opportunities, but also looking still to make the Taylor Cameron fight. But you rule that out for next. I, I think so. Yeah, I think I think the 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 June fight for Katie Taylor will probably be somebody else. Who's an option for Chantel Cameron? Loads of fights. I mean, you know, firstly she could come back and you know have a fight outside of being a mega fight. She's got potentially the winner of um, Harper against Sandy Ryan. Um, you know, she's got a possible fight with the winner of, um, uh, sorry, uh, Natasha Jonas. Obviously, you've got McCaskill fighting Lauren Price. I know she's probably not looking at that fight, but you know, she's going to want to be involved in big fights and, and fight for the championship belts. We want to put her in big fights. We've done a great job for her. I want to make the Katie Taylor fight, unquestionably. Katie Taylor wants that fight. And they must fight again before Katie Taylor exits the sport, which is not any time soon, but it, you know, who knows how long it's going to be. And Katie Taylor will 100% fight Chantel Cameron again. Just a couple before, before um, who's that behind us? Oh. What's, happened? What, what's happened to your hair? Just needs a bit of product. Okay. Product, hashtag product. Um, Ebony Bridges, mm. I don't know if you saw the post um, she kind of called out the influence that Astrid Wet. I don't know if you know who Astrid Wet is. Fights on the Misfit shows. Um, yeah, a bit of a, a random one that went out on her Twitter, but then also made some comments regarding yourself. I don't know if you've seen. If you have, could we get a response to that? Yeah, I did. I, th I, th I can't remember what the exact wording was, but something like... I want to say insulting offers, was it? I don't know, something like that. Um, look... We've done an amazing job with Ebony. Um, she's been great. We got her a world title shot out of nowhere really very early on. She really improved. We got her another world title shot in Leeds, which she won. Then she was brilliant against Shannon O'Connell. Stopped her in a, in a mandatory defence. Got injured, had to have an operation. Um, oh, the, the, the tweet's deleted, by the way. That's okay. Got deleted, so I know you're looking, beavering away, looking for it. But, um, and she got beat in America on a massive show. So the, the problem is, is that we have to make offers based on statistics and science in terms of viewership, in terms of tickets driven to the event, and sometimes the fighter or the teams don't agree with that calculation it's really quite simple do you know what I mean it's nothing to do with who we like who we don't like who you know, it's just a simple evaluation on our terms of what the value of a fight is the fighter absolutely does not have to agree with that and this is just what's happened there We've given our thoughts of the value of a specific fight. Ebony feels like that's an incorrect value. And then we try and find a middle ground or we just shake hands and, and move on. Do you know what I mean? I was disappointed with the comments, but you know, maybe she's frustrated. I, I don't, you know, the influencer stuff is, is not where we want to be. We want to be in real time, professional elite championship boxing. So. No, I'm sure, I mean, Frank's talking to, I think, her team and lawyers, and we'll see, but very disappointed with the comments, but she's got a right to feel how she feels about an offer. So, yeah, is what it is. Just literally a couple more. Conor Ben Pacquiao calls a lot of noise mm. in Saudi Arabia, literally. Um, it's gone a bit quiet since then. Can you give us any update on that situation? Also, Conor Ben's next move. Yeah, just pending, um, planning his fight, really, waiting on news, but the Pacquiao fight is there. Um, we've been in constant communication since Riyadh. I believe there's many international sites that want to stage that fight. We would rather do it in the UK, of course, because we think it's a big fight, but open to doing it anywhere in the world. And there's a good chance that could be next. Last one, Joshua. Mm. Is he going to like kind of, is the attitude with Joshua stay ready? Just obviously with the March 18th fight kind of nearing, is he, has he got one eye on if something happens or not really? You're not it's, looking at that. It's actually a good question. It's, it's um, frustrating that it's taken you the entire interview to ask a good question, but we got there in the end. Um, Josh is always ready. I mean, you know, Josh has fought four times in 11 months. And I have to tell you, 
because we were on a call the other day, he wants to fight again ASAP. Sooner or later, you do too many camps. Too many camps, too many camps. No. Um, and that was a bit over your head. Probably better for Parsons. That's more yeah. Parsons yeah. demographic. Sorry, yeah, because yeah. yeah. you didn't really laugh. So normally Parsons would be going, oh, you're amazing. And you know, Java. Java. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like Josh should just keep ticking over like he always does. Let's see what happens May the 18th, and then we, we, we go from so there. We're going to wait until... We're not going to wait as in... What saying happens? I'm not going to chuck anything Josh, there, but I hope Josh, the fight happens, obviously, with Fury. I, I saw his post this morning. He's in training, so, and he's always in training. But what we don't do is we don't jump into a fight underprepared because we need an opportunity. We, he's the hottest fighter in the world right now, unquestionable. Number one, numero uno. On what, like the best looking, is that what you meant? That as well. But I'm talking about in terms of draw, in terms of excitement, in terms of momentum, Anthony Joshua is the biggest star of the sport right now, right? He's the most talked about fighter in boxing right now. So we're not like, oh, AJ, um, Usyk's pulled out. I know you haven't been in training, but there's uh, five days to go. Do you want to jump in? He probably actually would do it, but we're in a really good position right now. He's got himself back in that position. And by the way, I want Fury Usyk to happen. Let's not jinx it. Absolutely. Let's get that fight on. We hope Tyson Fury does the business. And we'll, we'll go from there. Could Dillian White fight be back on the cards? He obviously returned in Ireland last weekend with a win over Christian Hammer. Possibly. I just don't know what the board's decision will be, in all honesty. You know, whether he can fight in the UK. And obviously the board licensed the fights in Saudi. So I don't know. You know, he was quite... I think his, his interview was quite honest where he said, I don't, I don't really know, I just want to fight. So good to see him back. Hopefully he can get some momentum. OK, Eddie Hearn, thank you very much. I'm gonna... at Eddie Hearn? You always do that. No. Like, I'm, at Eddie Hearn? Instagram tag. Little tag. Yeah. Your book, by the way, is down to £3 if anyone wants to go. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, and I've got the proof as well. Do you know what? Unbelievable value. Wait, wait, wait. Someone sent this to me the other day. Oh. Doing another one, actually. Someone's just put a sticker on that. It says £6. That clearly says £3, mate, just for the camera. Bush, the, the value is unbelievable. New, oh. new book on the way. You could be like Eddie Hearn for £3, basically. It's no, mental. You no, you can't. But you can understand what goes on inside the mind. Relentless, out in the bookshops. Sunday Times business te bestseller, actually, number one. And also, another book will be coming soon. Don't forget to check out my podcast, BBC Sounds. Unbelievable, going really well. Got big filming this week for another product launch that's coming very soon. But most importantly, don't miss the show this Saturday. I promise you a cracker. Before the bell and then 7 o'clock, live on the zone. Five 50-50 fights. A great night of entertainment. Brought to you by Matron Boxing. He'll write a book before he's 23, 100%. Out of control. What's that top? I see. Oh! <laughs> shift change. Wow. Eddie Hearn, thank you very much. After 14 years of interviewing you, it's an absolute pleasure, as always. And uh, keep it real. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.